my name is Voss, and if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, we've been doing a lot of reviews, and I'm joined here today with Alan from Kia of Beaver Creek. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and we got a special one. This is a 2018 Kia Stinger GT2. Guys, today I'm in the uh, Stinger GT2. This is Kia's kind of, I wanna say flagship car. It's a little different from their business model. They have a lot of cars that are more like the Kia Soul, the Rio, the Forte, the um, Optima. This was a whole different beast. They actually took engineers from BMW, from Audi, and they crafted this vehicle up to compete with those cars at a much more affordable price. And actually Kia Beaver Creek has got quite a few of these you know, in their location. And you can talk a little bit more about Kia Beaver Creek as well as some of the different stingers that you guys got. Yeah, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, we enjoy uh, having you here as well. It's nice to have a fellow audio enthusiast. Uh, this is one of my, fit. well, this is this is my favorite car that Kia makes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Although all the cars are very nice, uh, this is very specific to my needs. But we just opened up this location a few months back, maybe three or four months ago, now five months, something like that. Um, our sister store is Kia of Dayton and Huber Heights. And uh, we had some Southern uh, clients in Springfield, Waynesville, uh, just down uh, Springboro, places like that. And of course, it was a long drive for them to come back up and purchase again or do service and things of that nature. So it was time for us to open up another store to, to uh, be more accessible to them. And uh, so we have, we have a full complement of vehicles. We have everything from the Rio on up to obviously the Stinger, the Sedona, the Soul, of course, which accounted for about 49% of the sales in the U.S. last year. It's a big seller for, for Kia in general. The Rio is, uh, believe it or not, is the number one seller in the world for Kia. Wow. That's their highest one. The Optima, we've got several models from the uh, LX to the S to the EX, and we have a beautiful SX Turbo 2019 Snow White Pearl with panoramic roof everything it's just amazing to behold it's got red leather interior and it's beautiful so yeah I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this so the big question today is what is a 50 plus thousand dollar Kia you know what's it doing how does it fit in the Kia lineup and this car um, numbers wise you're looking at 360 65 horsepower I want to say 365 of uh, uh, horsepower and 370 365 and 375 foot pound of torque yep the torque is available at 1350 rpm so it's almost instantaneous there is a launch mode on here as well too yeah that will allow it to this is the GT2 yes so the this GT2. is the highest most like as a daily driver it is the all-wheel drive but it's the most highest driver focused uh, stinger available yes it's very driver centric uh, there's nothing left to get on the car as far as I, there's nothing left. I mean, uh, there's nothing. This is optioned out perfectly. We have the brushed uh, aluminum interior of uh, six uh, lighting, six uh, lighting. The ambient back, lighting. The ambient and lighting. The, got it. the the eight inch. Yeah, you know, the eight display. inch backup yeah. camera, of course. G force meter on it. The uh, heads up. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's got just about everything you could possibly. Or if you want anything more than that, I'd what you could put in it. <laughs> so the Kia Stinger, you know. It, numbers wise it's pretty impressive but today we're gonna do some real world driving and I'm gonna give you kind of my feel behind the wheel um, talk to you about because most people that are gonna be buying this probably aren't just gonna take it to the track if they do they're gonna drive it every single day you know rain snow it's really rainy and kind of gross today so it should be a good test to see how it does you know and not just perfect conditions I agree um, but we're gonna before we get driving we're gonna jump into some of the and I'm not gonna bore you with every single stat that this car's got but I'm gonna give you some of the highlights some of the cool things I find in here um, starting with the key this key is really cool this key looks like something out of a James Bond movie that you have like the key to a detonator or a missile or something <laughs> yeah. and you're going to get ready to press it and it's really cool because that's actually if the camera's going to focus that's actually how uh, you lock and unlock the car and then it's got a few other buttons as well there's the lock the unlock the trunk um, and 
Definitely, definitely one of the coolest keys. And you were kind of telling me the leather on this key is hand stitched, correct? Yes, they hand stitched them in there on that. It was just a little subtle touch that they wanted to add to it for just the luxury item to, to know that the work and effort was put into it to make it truly special. All right, so Alan's gonna talk about some of the key, the quick and important features as well as the impressive features that the Stinger's got, so go ahead. All right, thank you for, so much. Uh, first off, we have brushed aluminum permeating the car, the speaker covers here, uh, very, well, you see them on C-Class Mercedes-Benz quite a bit, very t very classy through here. Uh, stitched uh, dashboard, of course, there's your heads up display. Uh, I love these round, uh, almost retro yet modern look. They kind of remind me of um, something out of like an Audi. Yeah. I, I don't know why, I'm pretty sure I've seen this, I think the RS3 and maybe the S3's got them, but I've, I see like that style of, um, of like vent kind of coming out of Audi, so it looks it looks nice. It looks very premium. Well, uh, Pete Schuyler designs a lot of our cars. Once upon a time, he was the chief designer for Audi, so it doesn't surprise me that some of those, uh, well, his taste and his uh, you know his uh, talents are going to peep through. He's a very uh, very uh, creative individual, yeah. obviously. Uh, from what I understood, he actually took Audi out and made Audi look good again, according to what I've read. But nonetheless, he was part of this as well, along with Albert Bierman, who was involved with BMW in a very high level uh, list of cars that he was responsible for. It was a who's, who's list on car and drivers. Uh, we also featuring here, um, this is Napa leather. This is a glove grade leather here. Um, typically, when you're messing with cars like this, as you made uh, mention earlier, $52,000 vehicle, uh, to touch a Napa leather and BMW, W, the 4 Series, for instance, you'd be well into the 60,000 range in order to get into Napa leather. Uh, they start off with vinyl, then they move to leather, which is the higher grade, or, or uh, the higher grain, or heavier grain, rather, and then this would be your finer grain, and of course, if you look right behind your head, they have GT written into the seats, mm -hmm. and then above really us here, cool we have our uh, uh, quarter panel, I would call it, I guess, uh, roof on it, look at, plenty of foot, uh, leg room, yeah, here, I saw that, room. Uh, water bottle holders in each well yeah one in each door and one back there so we got a total of four there something um you know going off the kind of the stitching in here something i found interesting was yeah it says gt there it says gt on the trunk deck lid and it says stinger there but other than that it doesn't really say stinger anywhere else on the vehicle i mean i see a gt here a gt here and a gt on the deck lid as well as stinger but they really don't I like the minimalism. They don't, they don't, they're, you know, if you ever have, a, if you ever been in a BMW M car, mm -hmm. they're going to let you know it's a BMW M car. It's going to say M every single possible space you could look at. You know, and, they and, used to do that with the Soul. Um, when the Soul first came out, they had Soul written everywhere. Uh, I think sometimes when you're dealing with this type of vehicle, less can be more. Um, it, the one thing I was immediately struck about this, I was so excited when it came out, I, I couldn't wait to see it. When I saw it, the first thing that struck me was how it had a perfect balance of everything to it. Uh, the interior, it's not too busy, yet it's not too plain either. You feel like, you know, this is, this should cost a lot more than it does, but yet, it, <laughs> I don't know how they do things like this. I don't, you know, it, it, it's a marvel to me. I mean, you could go overboard with anything. Like you said, with a BMW, uh, those things can be extremely busy. Uh, yeah, that can be interesting as well, but subtlety has its own place as well. And then of course up here, we've got the G-Force meter on here. And then we, if we toggle up, we have a lap timer. So if we're out there, hit the track, we can keep track of what we're doing. And then we have our gauges for our oil temperature, torque and boost as well. And then you can access all this by simply hitting this button. And now we can actually look at our fuel economy. Not that that should be the most important thing, but. I mean, it gets 1925. Yeah. So it's not, it's not doing bad, actually. It's not terrible, no, not by any means. Uh, the heads up display, uh, I mean, again, this is just Alan, Alan's needs and Alan's likes and, and, and hot buttons, if you will. Heads up display is probably my most fav favorite feature. Yeah, no, features. I really like that. Uh, it's amazing to me. I don't know why all cars don't have it. <laughs> it can go up and down. It even tilts. Yes, which you is can a little, tilt it, uh, rotate interesting. it. And you can um, change the uh, diameter of the uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the font size, if yeah. you will, yep. and the color. I think there's a, it's a orange, white, and green that yep. you can change it to. I went ahead and chose white. I think white looks good because it's very visible, you can tell what you're doing, but it doesn't like distract you from the road. It kind of blends in, but it's there when you want to look at it. Um, that's kind of why I really liked the white color, but. And you know, something else too would be interesting, um, and 
probably something we couldn't do today per se. But I think I, I, I wonder to myself, and I've wondered this, what it would be like, you know, at nighttime, which would be a better color. Yeah. You know, which does it even need to change? But then again, it's a toy and you want to experience it <laughs> in its entirety, of course. Another feature of the Stinger that I really like, actually, apart from the heads up display and this might be my favorite feature on here actually is when you are changing your lights or your mirrors or your uh, windshield wiper sensitivity as I change it it actually shows me the readout on the screen I really like this because it kind of helps with limiting the distraction um, you know when you're driving and it's just it's a neat feature to have I haven't seen a, a lot of um, newer vehicles have this feature so i really i don't know i, I think it's it's a cool it's a cool neat feature that they included on here well the thing about it too is when you're in a high performance vehicle and the faster you're going obviously without <laughs> breaking laws quote unquote oh yeah uh, you know the minute you take your eyes off the road even if it's for a couple of seconds there's a certain amount of distance that's transpired and of course you know visual data and then of course wheel data is very important and uh, not having to have your attention diverted from that allows you to uh, obviously maintain better control over the vehicle yeah and it's not for me it's not even about better control it's every second that i'm experiencing the car is a sense of joy and wonderment that is true and if i'm diverted even by much going what what did I, you know, did I hit the right button, you know, whatever. It, when that happens, I'm done. I'm upset with myself. And so I think that, I, I, I think they're echoing the same sentiments. I don't think I'm unique in that. Um, and of course, you know, coming in from, you know, like Formula One racing and stuff like that, the heads up display, these type of input, those guys are going very, 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 very fast. They cannot afford to have their attention diverted for even a second. And that is true. You're, you're very right. So, um, I think we touched on, I touched on a lot of features I liked. Um, let's go out, do some driving. Sounds good. Um, let's tell, I'll tell you how it is behind, you know, behind the wheel. Let me give you my thoughts and let me give you guys my thoughts. And I try to be honest. So if there's something I don't like, I'm going to say it and let's, uh, let's get driving. Let's do it. So we're back on the road now. Um, today, my primary question, I guess, to answer is why does the Stinger cost 50? It, it costs, I've seen them as 55,000, 52,000. They start around 30, but the GT2 is the highest trim. They offer a four cylinder and a six cylinder. This has got the twin turbo 3.3 liter V6. Like I was telling you guys earlier, it pumps out 365 horsepower. 375 or 78 foot pounds of torque that torque comes in at 1300 rpms so it's got a nice power band 1300 and this guy revs all the way to about 6500 or 64 6500 rpms so it's got a nice power band um, in addition to that it's got a valve controlled exhaust so as you are hitting different rpms it opens those valves up and it's got like silent mode almost an intermittent mode and then a fully open mode so you can hear it actually makes some really good noises i would open it up it's been raining all day so uh, the roads are a little bit uh a little wet today but um the cars uh it's got you can feel it i can feel it just driving at 1300 rpms it wants to it wants to keep going you know i, th I think the nice thing about this car is um, some cars if I may bring up other brands like Porsche, Porsche d demands more power because it, it, it performs so well. Some cars, this car does the same, but it's also a fun car to drive at lower speeds as well. You know, that's one thing I was struck about this. You can push it through its paces, but if you're stuck following somebody, you can thank them for the gas savings <laughs> and the safety they're providing you as well. So it's fun to drive at all speeds, I found anyway. And I touched on this a little earlier, but for such a high performing car, it does get 19 miles a gallon around the city and 20, almost 25 on the highway. So, I mean, I, th this isn't a gas saver by any means, but for a car that offers that level of perf you know performance, you aren't really compromising too much on on the uh, you know the loss of gas really. Yeah, but, I think like you said earlier, this is a good day-to-day -day driver. And most people buying this aren't really going to take it to the track. I know it's the GT2. They're, they might do some track driving, but the likelihood of that is limited. They're probably going to drive this around every day. They're going to drive it hard. They're going to take their corners hard. They want to put, you know, put the te car to its test. And this is appealing, you know, when you jump into that fifty to sixty thousand dollar price range. You, Kia really is trying to directly compete with, you know, you've got your four series 
in the BMW, you've got your Mercedes E-Class, um, you know, you're starting E-Classes, you got the Audi, the A5 Sportback, the A4, A6, and the Stinger to zero to 60, the all-wheel drive version does it in 4.7, the rear-wheel drive GT2 model does it in 4.6 seconds, roughly. In that, in that price point, the 4 Series, the equivalent 4 Series cost-wise is like 4.8, and then the equivalent Audi, the A5 is like closer to, I think it's like 5.4, 5.1 seconds. So, you know, price per performance, you are saving a little bit of money there because if you want to jump into that into that other performance offered by the German cars or even the Japanese cars, you got to spend a little more. That's that's true, you know, but at, at the same time, this has got the German heritage with the Albert Biermann's involvement with it. So uh, you got a company like Kia, obviously, that has a lot of money that made an honest effort not, you know, I'm just going to dip my toe in and see how cold the water is. They kept throwing money at the project to get it where it was. This has been on five or six years in the making, and they never said no along, at least that I'm aware of. They never said no to anything. They just kept smiling and said, keep on going and doing what you're doing. We want to, the best for the less. And I think they achieved it personally. And like you were saying, this car kind of started as that concept, but they did take over... Um, designers from BMW, Audi, you know, to make this car come to life. It they they took people in the industry that had a lot of experience designing high performance, high luxury sedans, you know, and I'm gonna use the word sedan loosely because this car is a little more than just a sedan. Um, but they they have a lot of people that worked on this car that had a lot of experience in the industry in the German industry with the BMWs and the Audis, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah it, it takes money to do it and you can't skimp and they didn't they just didn't do that they they bought the best minds in and they look what they achieved with it and they proved they can do it for a lot less money i mean napa leather why does it cost sixty thousand plus dollars to get into napa leather and some of these brands when clearly even with the optima you could get into napa leather twenty eight twenty nine thousand dollars why is it why is why is this such a a lofty area for them to put that in they can put that in if they wanted to uh you know and then you've got the 10 year 100 000 mile powertrain warranty on this thing which means you could run this car without worrying about it you know four year 50 yeah you've got a timeline 10 year 100 that's a nice long ways that says i could run this car for a long time and enjoy myself without having to worry about what happens when i get on the other side of that warranty by the time you get to there you may very well be buying the next level of it which is not a bad thing all right we've we've done a few miles now in the uh, stinger gt2 and you know i've driven i've driven the m3 i've driven the 4 series the 3 i had a 335i the twin turbo 335i i had an a4 i've driven the s4 um it it feels i don't feel like i'm missing anything in this car that those had you know what i mean i don't you know the the biggest reason i had to do that real quick i saw a stretch of road and that exhaust opens up over 4,000 RPMs. But anyway, I'm scatterbrained sometimes. <laughs> um, one of the biggest things I, you know, in this car is nothing feels really cheap. Yeah, I mean, nothing's perfect. These buttons are great. They're minimal. Um, could they be better quality? Sure. You know, but it's not. If I had to nitpick, there's a couple things here and there. The lane assist bothers me, but you can turn it off. But really, overall, now that I've, you know, driven a, a few miles on this car, I don't really see it feels good. It feels premium. Steering's a... I'm used to a slightly tighter steering, even in cars of this nature, mm -hmm. but it's not bad. We are in sport mode. So the other thing is you can put it in different modes. So if you don't like, if this is too much for you, you can drop it down to whatever mode's the most comfortable for you. Um, but even even driving in sport with the stiffer, you know, the stiffer ride, it's still very comfortable. I don't feel any issues, like my back feels great. You know, I, I, I'm, I feel like, like you were saying earlier, this is really a great, you know, a touring car. It's, mm -hmm. It was designed, yeah, it can do well on track, but it was designed to just enjoy the road and enjoy just long driving and, you know, the enjoyment of having something that's got power behind the, you know, behind the wheel. Um, when you get behind the wheel, you have something that is going to put a smile on your face, yeah. you know, whenever you do it. And so far, I've definitely enjoyed my time in here because it, it feels nice, it feels premium. It's got a lot of great features, heated cooling seats, heated leather, steering wheel, um, Napa leather everywhere, heads up display. It's just, it's got so many features that one, 
at first you, you have to, you expect all these features, you know, in a car like this, but then you start to appreciate the add-ons and the little, you know, knickknacks they threw on top of all the features that you expect in, um, you know, that you get in like a BMW. So, you know, I've, I've driven this car about an hour now and before getting in this review, I was excited to drive this because I've always been very critical of Kia in a sense of everything they made, I felt like it was tailored towards more affordable cars, which there's nothing wrong with that, but they didn't really have anything thrilling or exciting. And really, the first time I saw Kia make a change for something was when that K900 came out. Um, they advertised, I mean, they said LeBron James drove it and all these other things, but it was a huge step because it, it was a luxury sedan that was priced at a category that was trying to compete at a bargain price of like an S-Class or a 7 Series, you know? And really, after that, this is the next high ticket, big, big priced, you know, vehicle I've seen come out of Kia. And the K900 wasn't my favorite, but the Stinger, you know, this is, this is a lot of fun and I'm having a blast and I'm enjoying driving it. And I'm actually, I'm so, enjo I'm so like enjoy vested in the driving. I almost forget how fast I'm going sometimes, yeah. you know, but overall I'll say this has kind of changed my outlook because like, you, like we were discussing, they brought in Porsche designers, BMW designers, Audi designers um, to make this car, and they really did a good job. They don't, it doesn't feel like a Kia. It, it, like if I, took, if I took this badge away and I had people go blind test drive this, if they knew the styling of the car, maybe they could tell you it's a Stinger, but if they didn't know, I don't know what they'd answer. I, I don't think they'd say Kia, that's for sure. Maserati, perhaps? It kind of, it's got, it, honestly, it's kind of got some of the Quattroporte and the, uh, the the um some of the stylings that you find in those cars for sure that's uh the first thing that went through my mind was you know the badging on the car if you take it away and you're not used to you know obviously you can see a lot of optimas on the road if you've got a good eye for automotive design you'll probably recognize one of those after a while but being so new you, you could slap a bmw sticker on it uh, you yeah i wouldn't know it You'd fool me. Yeah, you'd fool me. I think Porsche would be a, a far stretch because they are very distinctive. Yeah, and Porsche's got Porsche's got one car that are 911. Mm -hmm. Every car they make, like in the 911 series, looks the same with just a little more refinement. Right. Their argument is, it, it's the perfect design. We can only make it better. Which no fault to them. It's beautiful. But with this, you know, I. It's, it's got the styling from a Beamer, a Maserati. It's got some Audi features to it. And this is the one thing that's deceiving is, you know, this is a five-seater, five you know, four-door sedan. The um, rear trunk lid, when it opens up, there is so much space back there. It, it, it's like a hat, not a hatch. Bulk, it's kind of like a hatch. It's almost like, I compare it to like an Audi A7. You know, you got a nice, you know, big, comfortable cabin, and then your trunk is ginormous, and it's, it's kind of like the A7, the Tesla Model S. It opens up so big. There's so much cargo room back there. I wouldn't really call it a sedan. Yeah, it, it's it's strange how they managed to to uh, integrate everything effectively. I mean, this is a vacation car. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you, you throw the you know the kids in the vehicle and off you go, and you know, hopefully you're going through the mountains and you know some nice windy roads. Uh, this. This car answers everything. I mean, you take it to the grocery store. You, like you said, go to the track, run it, drive it home. Yeah, uh, it's versatile. It's uh, that's what a good car from my thought process and what I like as a human being, and what gives me a thrill is something that's that versatile. Can I do whatever I want to in it? Yeah, I, I'm in. Sign me up. All right, guys, it's a new day. I'm back in the Stinger. I'm just finishing up my review. It was getting a little too dark, but I got all the driving I needed, and really, I'm left to just conclude. Overall, I really like the Stinger. I haven't seen a downside, really. I think the biggest issue with this vehicle is that it's badged as a Kia, but if you can get over that, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here. I mean, you're getting a car with 365 horsepower, 378 foot-pounds of torque at 1,300 RPMs, and on top of that, you're getting a lot of amenities like a heads-up display, a G-Force accelerometer, heated cooled seats, heated steering wheel, navigation. I mean, every luxury premium option you want is in here. The seats are, the bolstering is very nice. It's very comfortable. I felt like when I was taking turns in this car that overall it, it hugged very well. And I want to say I'm, I'm a huge fan of this car. It's a lot better than I was expecting it to be. And I want to give a huge thank you to Kia, Beaver Creek, and Zach. Uh, for setting this up for me and for Alan for joining me on my review and getting you guys some knowledge on the Stinger. 
So if you enjoyed my review on the Kia Stinger, smash that like button, share this uh, review. That's a huge way to help me out. Subscribe. Check out my Instagram, VosK614. That's where you'll see upcoming previews of vehicles I'm going to review, or that it'll go there before it goes on YouTube. So give me a follow, check it out. You can stay up to date on all the content that I'm working on, and I will see you next.